Hi everyone, in this chapter we will briefly introduce you to the main functions of the TVS1000 and various areas of the interface and then show you how the system works. Before we start using TVS1000, connect the monitors, the keyboard, the mouse, the audio mixer and the RMC220 controller to the TVS1000 and then plug in the power cord. Press the power button and wait for about 40 seconds for the system to complete its boot up process. After then, you will then be able to start using the TVS1000. After seeing the main screen, or the startup screen as we call it, you will be able to see all of the function categories. The categories are project management, still text editor, virtual set maker, the virtual set shop, and the shutdown button. This chapter will discuss project management and we will leave the rest of the sections to later chapters. First of all, let's move the mouse cursor over the production live pane and on the startup page and a drop down menu will appear. You can either choose to open a new file or an existing file. Before opening a new file, please make sure that the selected video format is what you want and confirm that the connected camera supports the selected resolution. After the configuration is confirmed, click your mouse to open a new file. The user interface will then appear after that. The user interface can be divided into four major sections. The first section is the upper third of the UI, which contains the preview screens of all materials, such as the camera, the media, the pictures, the text and the four virtual background views as well, as the preview and program out screens. The second section in the lower left hand corner of the UI contains four mix and effects layers, ME1 to ME4. We can configure three preset PTZ faces for each media and effect layer and thus this is equivalent of 12 virtual camera positions. Click on the autoplay button on the right to enable the autoplay and you will see smooth movement between faces. If disabled, it will only use the cut transition effect. The bottom rows A and B allow the user to place the talent on the corresponding virtual background and select the material to be, to be displayed on the Plasma TV. The above mentioned features form the second section. The third section in the bottom right hand corner is called Media Library Management, where users can define the materials for Media 1 and 2, Stills 1 and 2 and Text 1 and 2. We can also configure Audio Mixer and Chroma Key settings in this section. Please note that the Chroma Key settings only apply to the camera source and not to the rest of the media files. After materials, virtual background and camera faces are all set, the last part will be to put them together by using the virtual switcher. Just like any general switcher, there are two rows for switching control. Preview and Program Out. On the right of the virtual switcher, there are DSK keys for the user to define their own downstream key or overlay. DSK sources can be camera, video, still pictures and text. The user can preview the selected media in the first section on the preview screen. After the sources and their positioning are confirmed, click on Cut or Fade button to place the downstream gear on the Program Out screen. The above are a basic operational description and an introduction to the TVS1000 interface. After you have mastered all of that, you will then go to other functional operations. The RMC220 remote controller that comes with the TVS1000 helps the users to control the system very intuitively. It allows you to assign most of the functions, such as transitions, downstream gear overlays, etc. to a single controller, saving the user a lot of unnecessary mouse clicks. It is also a great protection for your wrist against RSI, that is repetitive strain injury. Most importantly, it's a free tool, so pick up your RMC220 and use it.